This bone looks fragile at the ends. I'll just wipe the middle then. Once I was done, I wrote down his identification, then placed it into the cup next to me. Hopefully I wrote the correct date this time. Looks like you're settling in the lab just fine. Thanks. At least bones aren't falling apart in my hands. They do require that delicate touch. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Did Hendrik or Augustan tell you about the history of Kalen Cave? Augustan did. I didn't know its discovery was so interesting. Interesting? It seemed like a standard procedure to me. Wait, then a lot of caves here were discovered by kids? Kids? Augustan said kids found the cave after they watched a movie about an exploring archaeologist. He told you that! <laughs> nine nine! Kalen was discovered by cavers during a survey back in the 80s. There's a lot of caves in this region and they were mapping them out. Looks like you fell for one of his jokes. Seems so. Thanks for clearing it up. No problem. Augustan tends to spin things once in a while. Don't take him too seriously. Unless it's about microstratigraphy. Right. We just won't go there, shall we? Yeah, we shan't. Hmm. Oh, cute! I alternated between emailing my parents and checking adorable bunny videos on my laptop. The shift had finished and people were dispersed around the museum as usual. Hendrik and DeAndre piled the trays to return to the storage closet for another day. While they did, I could hear them chit-chatting in French. I logged off and stretched one arm. I casually twirled the chair around to face the others. DeAndre noticed while Hendrik disappeared down the hall momentarily. All up to date? Yeah, fired off a quick response to my folks. They appreciate all the pictures, but Dad's disappointed I haven't dug up a dinosaur yet. I think that's a completely different field. Oh, DeAndre. Jacques Elka. Uh, sorry. I was going to mention, before I forget again, that we received drawings and thank you letters from the elementary school. Aw, oh, really? How sweet of them. Very. They wrote down their favorite events during the whole tour. Can you guess what got mentioned the most? Here. Grabbing a stack of papers, Hendrik spread them out like a deck of cards and tapped one of the drawings. DeAndre and I rifled through them while Hendrik translated some of the sentences. One paper caught my eye. It showed a crude, humanoid shape with fangs, outstretched arms, and yellow lines all over the face. Oh, come on, I'm not that hairy. Got the goatee all wrong, too. Despite the complaints, DeAndre chuckled and stroked his chin. <laughs> I don't know, I think this is a pretty accurate Deanderthal. <laughs> DeAndre rolled his eyes. <sighs> Hendrik gave a tiny shrug. I wish I was the one who came up with that. It is quite sad. While they chatted, one picture caught my eye. Aw, someone even drew Kyler? At least, I think this is Kyler. I tapped the drawing with the green and purple stick figure. Ah, uh, yes. Kyler seemed to have enjoyed himself, and he helped the kids a great deal. Kyler's actually a decent guy when he doesn't act like there's a stalactite stuck up his arse. DeAndre, language. Oh, sorry, stalagmite. Since the lagmites rise from the floor, they'd make more sense than a selactite. <laughs> DeAndre chuckled at his own display of knowledge, and Hendrik let it slide as he collected the papers. Anyway, thanks for helping me, DeAndre. Later, Hendrik. Mel. DeAndre left, and Hendrik returned the class letters to the corner of the table. Noticing me lingering, Hendrik glanced up. Need something? Oh, I was wondering where Kyler was since we mentioned him. He's usually upstairs reading or in his tent, but I haven't seen him. I think he's still in the cave. What? But isn't it all locked up and stuff? At this time, yes. However, Augustan made an exception. Kyler is currently scouting the cave's interior since we plan to put up some displays for visitors during the festival next week. Festival? An open event that anyone can join. There'll be more details next Monday since we'll be needing everyone's help on this one. Sounds fun. You're giving Kyler more responsibilities lately. Or has he done this before? Well, since he helped during the tour, he's proved himself capable outside of the excavation and lab activities. I thought it wouldn't hurt. I'm glad things are sorted out between you two. Same here. Not sure why this year is different from the previous ones, but I'm grateful we're on friendlier terms. Let's hope it stays like that. Anyway, I'll see you around. Later, Melissa. 
I closed the lab door, then noticed something to my right. On the widest spot of the floor, there was a long sheet of white construction paper spread out. Was someone drawing? Someone was. I turned the corner, careful of the glass displays, and saw the end of the white paper. Shoji knelt next to it, with an art book open beside him. Hey, you planning to draw something? Ah! He glanced up, startled, and relaxed when he realized it was me. I crouched down on the other side of the paper. Yeah, one of the cardboard displays got ruined since it was stored incorrectly. It was the Neanderthal cutout they used to attract visitors during the festival. Their receptionist ordered a new one, but it won't arrive in time. I heard her talk to Professor Dupont and Hendrick about it. Afterwards, I spoke to Hendrick and said I could make a temporary replacement. Uh, it won't be anything amazing, and it'll be on flimsy poster paper, but... I thought I could help out a bit. I probably won't be able to do much during the actual event. That was really thoughtful of you. How long will it take? I'll have plenty of free time over the weekend. I think if I can get the majority of the line art done, 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 line art done before Monday, it'll be completed for the festival. I still have to figure out how big I should make it. Picking up a pencil, he crawled outward and started making light marks on the paper. He returned to the art book, which was a graphic novel with Neanderthals. Why don't you have someone lie down so you can just outline them? Oh, that could work. A rough outline would help. Now the question was, who to volunteer for the task? I can grab DeAndre, I could volunteer Shoji, or I can volunteer myself. I don't think Shoji... Shoji would have a massive panic attack if I were to draw around him. How about I just lie down? I'll do it. I brought the idea up. I crawled onto the paper, careful not to crinkle it, then spread out my arms and legs. Shoji watched for a moment, then chuckled. <laughs> you don't have to do a Vitruvian man pose. Vitru... what? The famous drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, depicting a man in two different poses. Oh, that one. Well, you're the artist. What do you want me to do? Uh, first, put your leg shoulder width apart. Raise your left hand like you're going to wave. After I listened to his instructions, he was satisfied with the results. Grabbing a pencil, he scooted over to my right side and began tracing from my stomach. Uh, oh my, so con so much concentration. <laughs> I tilted my head, watching while he worked. His arm moved fluidly, and he occasionally bit his lip in concentration. There was a ticklish, ch ticklish sensation, and I pursed my lips to stifle a giggle. I had forgotten how sensitive I was. Luckily, Shoji didn't seem to notice, and the pencil encircled my head before continuing to my other arm. When the tip brushed against my fingers, I squirmed and scrunched up my hand, unable to hold in my laughter. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm ticklish. I relaxed, but as soon as the pencil grazed me again, I jerked my arm back, giggling uncontrollably. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try to be more mindful. Don't apologize. I'm the one making it difficult for you. Was my hand here? I shifted, trying to remember the position. Shoji reached across, using his own hand to manipulate my fingers and align my arm. Here. After he adjusted my hand, he paused when he realized his upper body hovered over mine. Blushing, he hastily retreated to his kneeling position, angling his face away. <laughs> Ah, I didn't mean to get too close. It's fine. I can tell you get absorbed when you draw. Shoji nodded but said nothing. However, instead of tracing from a stationary position, he moved clockwise around me to avoid repeating the incident. The pencil traveled up my leg, then halted beside my knee. Um, you can finish the last part. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sitting up, I noticed where he stopped and finished the outline. There we go. Such a gentle. I rolled off the paper to assess the outcome. That looks pretty cool. Now you have your Neanderthal profile to work with. It'll definitely come in handy. Thanks for volunteering, Melissa. It was no problem. I look forward to seeing the finished product. He didn't get a phone call this time. That's good. Oh, did I? Did I double fail? What did I click on? I didn't click nothing. Oh no, my stress is so... No, girl, you need to do the... <sighs> Lady. Lady of mine. <sighs> Honestly, okay. Cave. Volunteer. Cave. 
volunteer. Do I just like peace out at 100 stress or what's gonna happen? Lab, volunteer. Lab, volunteer. Cave, internet, internet. I still wanna have one gaming, darn it. Okay. Let's go do this. Week seven, festival week. Oh no, the stress. It's going off the charts though. Is there something else to lower stress? Ugh. And this was done entirely in colored pencil? You're really skilled at this. Hendrik looked over the finished cutout laid on the table. Shoji had recently put the finishing touches on it and declared it complete. Um, thank you. I kept it on the minimalistic side, but it should work for tomorrow. Not bad, not bad at all. Hey, since you're great at artsy stuff, would you be up for overseeing the face painting station tomorrow? F face painting? Or would it be too different from what you're used to? N no, I've used paints before. Shoji flashed me a save me expression and I stepped in. It's something to think about at least, Shoji. I don't think she's expecting an answer right away. Rosemary faltered slightly, and I knew she was the type who liked snap decisions. However, she turned to Hendrik, who nodded respectfully. It's no problem. The chores won't be officially assigned until tomorrow morning anyway. Hendrik thanked Shoji once again, and the two of us went outside. Should I, or...? The face painting? I think you can do it. Think so? It's all one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm sure it'll mostly be kids wanting a flower or a butterfly on their cheek. Just ask a question like who their favorite superhero is, and they'll go on while you focus on the face painting. I see. Like, what's your favorite mocket? Oh, I love the cake-shaped one. I keep forgetting its real name because I always call it Bun- I stopped when I realized it wasn't a real question, and he laughed. <laughs> Since you put it that way, I'll definitely consider it. Now it's time for the hospital. Before we could discover it further, his cell phone rang. I grinned, recognizing the video game theme. Muttering a quick apology, Shoji walked a few paces away, then pulled out his phone. He glanced at the phone display quizzically and hit the receive button. Allo? We oui, say Shoji. Qua? Ma mère est le hospital? I froze at the word hospital, and Shoji's voice lowered to a frightened whisper. I knew it was impolite to eavesdrop, but I didn't want to leave with upsetting news being delivered. I worriedly took a step forward, waiting until Shoji hung up. When the call ended, Shoji turned around looking pallid. Shoji, what was that about? You mentioned the hospital? Huh. He took a deep breath, struggling to ease his nerves and remain calm. One of the employees found my mom unconscious at the bottom of the stairs. He called an ambulance right away and isn't sure how severe it is, but... We don't know the details. Let's get you to the hospital first. When does the train arrive? Shoji frantically punched numbers into his phone. I'll have to take a taxi. This town was tiny, and I doubted a taxi would arrive quickly. Wait, let's see if we can get someone to drive you. But but Something going on? DeAndre glanced at Shoji, concern reflected on his face. Kyler was not far behind. Shoji's mother's in the hospital. What? Is she okay? Although DeAndre's consideration was genuine, Shoji had a hard time coping with the crowd and struggled to speak. Kyler pulled on DeAndre's arm. He needs space. Kyler finished the sentence in French, and DeAndre glared momentarily before nodding and understanding. We'll inform Hendrik and Dupont. The two vanished, and I placed both of my hands on Shoji's shoulders to steady him. He trembled violently, and I had no idea what to say to help calm him down. I actually put my hands on his shoulders. It's my fault. I shouldn't have returned here. It's because I'm not tending to the store that... It's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. I heard someone approaching and turned to see Hendrik, who was already holding a set of keys. I heard what happened. Shoji, do you want me to drive you to the hospital? It's all the way in Liege. I can't impose. This is a family emergency, and a taxi or train will take too long. Don't think of this as a burden. It's important to be with family. Hendrik, thank you. You can thank me once I drop you off. Let's go. Shoji took a step forward and I grabbed his hand, giving it a brief squeeze. Aww. 
Hang in there. I'm sure she's alright. I hope so too. Once Hendrick's truck pulled out of the driveway, Kyler and DeAndre approached me. What happened exactly? I summarized what little I knew, and the two exchanged solemn looks. Bummer. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Depends on the fall. If she was unconscious, a concussion will be likely. I've seen enough of those. It might be bad, then. I don't want to think of worst-case scenarios already. Melissa's right. It's too early to speculate when we don't have enough information. Yeah, at least we'll be able to know what's going on thanks to Hendrick. Do any of us have Shoji's number? Um, we exchanged online contact information since I can't exactly use my phone here. I can fire off a message later and see if he responds. Thank you. Please, let us know if you hear from him. Interesting. I've invested enough this time, I guess. We went our separate ways. I entered my tent and grabbed my phone. Once I sat in range of the weak Wi-Fi, I typed out a message. Mention your concern or mention how everyone is worried? Let's make it personal. It's understandable if you don't respond anytime soon. Hope everything's okay and that your mom has a speedy recovery. You and your family are in my thoughts. Take care. Ugh, I'm terrible at these things. I wish I knew the right thing to say in a situation like this. I hear you, girl. It wasn't until dinner time that Hendrick returned. I rushed over to him and he gave me a reassuring smile. Is everything okay? I just dropped Shoji off at the hospital. I gave him my number in case he needs me to pick him up. Yeah, it's understandable. Thanks, Hendrick, for jumping in like that. I couldn't let him wait around for the train or a taxi. It was the least I could do. Now go eat. It won't do anyone any good if you don't take care of yourself as well. Dinner was a blur, although I explained the situation to Chantal and Joan when they asked about Shoji's absence. I also told Kyler and DeAndre I haven't heard from him yet. Kyler looked worried, but thanked me for updating him. Aw, Kyler and Shoji are so close, I never realized before just how close they were. When dinner was over, I passed the time playing a video game in my tent. I kept crawling to the end of my tent to check my phone. If I adjusted the phone just right, I could get one Wi-Fi bar. But so far I'd received no replies, which made me dwell on the situation even more. <sighs> I tapped the buttons on my handheld lazily. The night grew cold, and I closed the tent to keep the bugs out and retain some warmth. Was Shoji going to spend the night somewhere else? I guess that meant he won't be able to participate in the festival tomorrow. I heard footsteps approaching the tent area. Knowing it wasn't someone coming back from the bathroom, I shot up. Sho-ga! Uh, I forgot I'd closed the tent and ended up colliding into the flat before bouncing back. The person outside yelped and I hastily unzipped the door. Ah! Shoji stood there, one hand using his phone as a flashlight and the other clutching his chest in an attempt to quell his shock. Shoji! You're back? Melissa, you're still up? Of course. I was worried sick. How's your mom? Um, here is probably not the best place to discuss it. Oh. Sensing my disappointment, Shoji gestured to the building behind me. We can talk over there. What is this place? <laughs> I shoved my feet into some flip-flops and zipped up the tent. I forgot my hoodie, but I barely noticed as I followed Shoji around the corner. Like in the kitchen. Mom will be alright. Good. Was it serious? Um... I admit, when I heard the good news, I couldn't really concentrate on the diagnosis. I was just so relieved. She suffered a minor concussion. They think she fainted more from the pain than the actual head injury. She also fractured her heel bone, but she won't need surgery. I guess the bone pieces weren't moved? Ah, uh, it's a stable fracture. She'll be fine. However, she can't put any weight on that injured foot for a few months. She'll need physical therapy and do little exercises to encourage motion and flexibility. Basically, she just has to take it easy and she'll make a full recovery. Thank you. I'm guessing that's what the doctor was explaining to me. I'm surprised. You seem to know a lot about it. <laughs> Did that happen to me at a dance competition? Uh, I phrased that wrong. Um, it doesn't seem to be a topic you'd be familiar with. Well, I'm a dancer. I've known people who had similar injuries, so I've learned a bit from them. I'm surprised too, actually, at the fact that you returned. I thought you'd go home or remain at the hospital. 
I did consider it, but once my mom learned I would be helping out at the festival tomorrow, she encouraged me to return. She said it sounded like I was enjoying myself, and that she'd feel awful if I dropped everything for her sake. Glad to hear she's fine. I guess she didn't want to worry- want you to worry too much. Well, I can't not worry, but it's still a relief that she'll make a complete recovery. Anyway, sorry for keeping you up. I didn't think you would. Don't apologize. It was my decision, and you can't stop me from worrying about you when things like this happen. I'm not sure if you checked your phone, but did you happen to receive a message from me? Ah, I did. I'm sorry I didn't reply. I was a little occupied. No problem. I'm, uh, sort of clumsy at these kind of things, so I'm sorry if the message didn't help in any way. It did. He paused and adjusted his glasses, obscuring his eyes. Um, I reread it a lot in the waiting room. It was reassuring to know that someone cared. Thanks for that. It meant a lot to me, Melissa. Ah, It was no problem. Of course I care. We should get some shut-eye, though. We need to get up at, like, what, 6 a.m.? I wonder if I should bother with my regular jog, then. Then good night. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, that was so sweet! Hear it straight from Shoji. I held back a yawn, rocking on my heels. It was early morning and all of the students gathered around Augustan, who was briefing them on the duties. One by one, the students nodded or asked questions. When the instructions finished, everyone scurried off to their assignments. Kyler was kind enough to summarize the speech for me. And then there's a group that'll need to organize the utensils. Got it. I'll see what I can do to help out. I've never attended an archaeology-themed festival before. I quickly glanced to the side to give my cue. Let's have fun and let's make party! Aww. Let's, let's make, make party! party! What did Melissa bribe you with? She owes me a beer. I did it because she asked nicely. She's taking advantage of your good nature, mate. You have to stand firm around pushy people like her. I gave him a shove. I'm not pushy! See what I mean? <laughs> what are we all loitering here for? Do we forget our duties? Not me. I'll be helping with the food preparations. I was translating the lecture for Melissa. I'll leave for the cave now. Oh, um, I was going to ask where all the supplies for the face painting are. That's why I am here. They're in the lab and ready for you. And what will you be doing, Hendrik? Once I finish labeling all the rocks in the display I created upstairs, I'll be overseeing things. And yourself? Me? I'll... I'll feel like I need to sneeze. Whether it happens... Achoo! Yep, it's happening. Okay, I'll sneeze, and then I will help Shoji set up the face paint station. I turn to Shoji. You don't mind if I help out, right? Not at all. The two of us entered the lab and found a small pile of face paint products still in their packaging. Beside them were towels, makeup sponges, and a small mirror. Hendrik, who had been heading for the stairs, quickly leaned in through the doorway. That should be everything on the table. I might have gone overboard a bit, but hopefully it'll cover the bases. Feel free to keep the drawings simple. Flowers, cats... You know, the usual requests. Oh, many kids will likely ask for mocket critters or whatever they're called, so watch out for that. They'll be too complicated to paint anyway. <laughs> Shoji and I exchanged a knowing glance. Oh, we got this. Don't worry, I'll only draw what I'm familiar with. As Hendrik departed, he paused at the doorway. Oh, I don't mean to pry, but how's your mother? If you're back, it wasn't too serious, right? Thankfully, it was nothing life-threatening, but she'll have to stay off her feet for a while. Heel fracture. Thanks again for driving me to the hospital. It was nothing. I'm glad it worked out. I'll be sure to relay the rely. I'll be sure to relay the news to the others if you haven't already. They were all worried. But they were. Now it was Hendrix's turn to be surprised. Of course. Even Kyler, although I doubt he'll admit it. Hendrick politely excused himself, leaving us to our task. I approached the table and marveled at the wide spectrum of colors. Wow, what a variety. I wonder how many guests they're expecting. The lecturer said they could seat up to 60 people at one time, but visitors will be coming and going at different intervals. Between the two of us, we carried all the supplies outside in one trip. Nice. 
Where is the face painting corner anyway? To your right. There is a small table with two chairs beside it. That'll be my station. Once we had set the supplies down, we ripped open the plastic and cardboard packaging. Shoji left briefly to grab some paper and containers of water, then started to test the paints. I watched him intently as he drew spirals and circles on the paper before dipping the brush into the water again. You're not even trying and the circles look perfect. Seeing his skill made me eager to show off my own meager abilities. Grabbing a smaller brush made for finer details, I dipped it into the paint and drew a few fluffy shapes of my own on the paper. Oh, this brand I use looks really nice. Should we stick with this type? Shoji peered over and examined the results. That does appear to be higher quality. Nice sun and cloud. It's supposed to be a sunflower and a bush. Ah. <laughs> we should probably test it out on the skin, though. Why don't you practice on me? I sat down on the chair expectantly, folding my hands in my lap. What you gonna paint? You sure? You don't mind? Not at all. Besides, it'll show that I'm in the festive spirit. Shoji nodded and gestured to the paints that were already prepared for use. Then what would you like me to draw? Hmm. Something simple and small? Now surprise me, boo. I'll let you decide. Surprise me! You sure? No requests? He tended to leave tentatively. Tentatively. Reach for one of the brushes, and I push my hair back. Whatever you think will look good on me. Have fun with it. At first, I worried I was pressuring him, and he did seem to struggle with the idea. However, he finally nodded and sat opposite to me. I'll think of something. I hope it's to your liking. Shoji arranged the plastic tray for accessibility, then instructed me to angle my seat toward the table so he could paint comfortably. I'd forgotten he was left-handed. I had forgotten. Attentive, ugh, good grief. Attentively, he examined my temple, then glanced at his palette. You might want to close your right eye. Oh my. <laughs> close your right eye, Melissa. <laughs> close it. <laughs> Don't grin like a dummy. Oh, looks like a butterfly wing. Picking a gorgeous light blue, he started applying it to my face. The paint was cold, but concentrated in a small area. The brush tickled as it extended toward my forehead, then down my cheek. How much are you painting? Don't worry, I won't paint your whole face. That'd take too long, and we'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> Restless, I fidgeted, but Shoji adapted to my movements. Gingerly, he tilted my head, then leaned in as he concentrated on something very detailed. I could tell since he bit his lower lip absentmindedly. He angled his body back toward the table and twirled a thin brush into the yellow paint. Almost done. Just need to add... He trailed off while cradling my other cheek to steady it. Once he pulled away, his hand dropped. His hands dropped to his lap, and he flashed me a satisfied smile. There. He held up the mirror, and I let out a little gasp. <gasps> wow, you really went all out! Although my sprite doesn't have it. <laughs> Did I? I thought it was rather simple. Our artistic perspectives are definitely on a different scale here. Thanks so much, Shoji. It's lovely. No problem. I think it looks beautiful on you as well. Uh, not implying that you're not pretty without it. I mean, you're always pretty. Uh, I was trying to say... Uh... <laughs> he fidgeted awkwardly and hid his face behind the mirror. I stood up and peered over his improvised shield. Thanks. You're really sweet. Come on, we should finish setting this up. <laughs> Phew. Relieved the focus was away from him, he gave a nod and immediately stood up. We tossed the discarded cardboard into a plastic bag and cleaned the brushes that he used. When we were done, Shoji stammered out a thank you. Now that we were finished, I decided to float around and help out with miscellaneous chores until the festival started. Let's do that. Festival time! Where should I go? Let's stop by the face paint station again. I strolled over to the face paint station to see how Shoji was doing. I smiled when I saw a little boy, roughly around 8 years old, excitedly talking in French. Shoji hummed and asked a question while delicately drawing a superhero logo across his face. When he was finished, Shoji grabbed the mirror to showcase his work. The boy gasped happily then ran off to show his mom. The woman said something to the boy, who then turned around to shout a delayed, MERCY! <laughs> Shoji cupped the side of his mouth to shout back. 
Duran! How's it going over here? Pretty well. I was nervous at first, but I find once you ask the kids their favorite animal or who's their favorite superhero, they'll happily chat while getting painted, and I don't have to say much. They're not super restless or anything? Being able to practice on you helped. The kids aren't as fidgety, though. I couldn't help it. The paint was cold and it tickled. If you'd like, I could do a touch-up. You've had it on for a while now, and the corners look a little smudged. Sure, thanks for offering. It didn't take long to retrace some of the faded lines. A few minutes later, Shoji announced he was finished, and I examined the fresh paint with the mirror. It looks great. I'll try not to smudge it again. I thanked him and decided to walk around once more. <laughs>